When a gold mining company finds a new mineral deposit with just 10 grams of gold per ton of rock, they've hit a jackpot. This is such a high grade, they call this a bonanza style mineral deposit. Now, did you know that your mobile phone contains 30 times as much gold as a bonanza gold ore? And not just gold. <laughs> Your phone contains at least 40 different chemical elements, many of them rare and precious. Now, how do I know that? Well, I took a mobile phone and completely crushed it in a kitchen blender. And then I dissolved it and ran a chemical analysis in my lab. Now, this is probably the most fun experiment I've ever done in my career. But why did I do that? Now, I'm going to try and explain that. I am a geologist, so I study the Earth and I know where to find minerals. I really completely changed tack because of the climate emergency. Like so many other scientists, I feel that we need to be very outspoken and bold about a really urgent need for change to tackle this crisis. I'm getting impatient with the slow pace of change in how we deal with this crisis. So I changed some of my research and I changed some of my teaching. And I do things like this, standing here before you. Now, I can assure you, I'm a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I am very passionate about this topic. So about this climate emergency, we need to stop using fossil fuels and we need more renewable energy sources to limit the further impact of the already dramatic global change. So we need wind turbines, we need solar panels, we need electric vehicles. This is called the energy transition. And it's already happening. Our neighbouring countries, Germany, Denmark, the UK, are already producing 50% of their electricity from clean, low-carbon sources. Not the Netherlands, I'm afraid to say. We barely manage 20%. But as a geologist, when I see a wind turbine, I see also lots of materials. I see steel, I see aluminium, I see copper. But most importantly, I see a super element called neodymium. Now, wind turbines need strong magnets to make electricity. And neodymium makes magnets super powerful. It's like steroids for wind turbines. And a modern wind turbine uses about 100 kilograms of this stuff. But if we use more of this super element, we could make an even better wind turbine one that is more efficient, more reliable, and even less noisy. Now, why wouldn't we do that? The problem is that almost all neodymium comes from one mining area in China. And about nine years ago, the Chinese government just threatened to restrict its exports. Now, the price of the super element neodymium increased sevenfold almost overnight, and magnets became suddenly expensive. Now, prices have settled again, but we are still economizing in the use of neodymium for our wind turbines as a result. So this is an example where our worries about a key raw material are already impacting on the energy transition. Now, let's have a quick look at an electric vehicle through my geologist's eye. I see the huge batteries, which use another super element called lithium. Now, also as a geologist, I know that it will be a huge challenge to find enough lithium to make sure that all new vehicles can be electric by 2040. An even bigger problem may be the cobalt in these batteries. Globally, we are partly dependent on cobalt from illegal and unsafe mines in African countries, even mined by children. Now, who here does not find that deeply troubling. Super elements like these, that are so important for society, are also called critical raw materials. I'm part of a research group here at the university where we develop new methods for finding these materials on our planet, even from space, using satellites. But now let's go back to our mobile phones. 
When I crushed that mobile phone and analysed it, I found that it was absolutely full of critical raw materials, like neodymium, like lithium, like cobalt. Materials that we so desperately need for the energy transition. And yet, most phones go straight to landfill when we buy a new one. Only one in three mobile phones are currently recycled in Europe. Do you see the problem? Now, note that I haven't simply told you, you must recycle your mobile phone. But if you are still with me, then maybe you've started to get a glimpse of your mobile phone through my geologist's eye. Not just as a cool gadget, but as a treasure trove of hard-won raw materials, which all originated at a mine somewhere. Not just one mine, many mines. Maybe as many as 40 mines all around the globe. And when you see your phone in that new way, maybe then it makes perfect sense to recycle it. Not only do that with your phone, but also with your hard drive, your tablet, your charger, your charger cables. And when, next time when you buy a new phone, maybe you won't only look at its price or the quality of its camera, but also at how much of it is already recycled material. And when it breaks, do I have to replace the whole phone? Can I just replace the faulty component? Maybe you can buy a second-hand phone. Now, if you do any of those things, you're doing something really important. Because then you're becoming part of what we call the circular economy. So, let's for a moment imagine an ideal world where all materials are reused and recycled. Where we only mine what we really need. Where we put less strain on the planet. One where we don't have to worry about whether we have enough of those critical raw materials to make the best possible wind turbine, best possible solar panel, best possible electric vehicle. Now, where also energy is clean, Better recycling can put us on the path towards that world, then surely that is worth the effort. Thank you.